Hello everyone. We are at the Provider Enrollment Management System, or in short, PEMS dashboard. I would like to start off by pointing out Provider Management here at the top of the page. This is where all your enrollment records are kept. You'll notice that there is a field that gives us our revalidation due date. If a provider is within 180 days of this date, they can submit a revalidation request. In the upper left corner, we see Request. After we submit our request, this will be where we can view the status of that request. To start, click the three dots on the right and click View. This will open the enrollment record for the provider that is applying for revalidation. To get started, click Edit Enrollment Record in the upper right corner. Here we see that the only two options are to create a request for a revalidation application or to update your email address. Remember, these will be your only options if you are within 180 days of your revalidation date. To get started, click Create Request for Revalidation. We have now successfully created our enrollment record, and there are a few things that I would like to point out before we continue with our demo. In the upper right corner, you'll see the request number for your revalidation application. If you need to exit the request and finish it later, you can search using the request number that is found in the request section on the provider management page that we reviewed earlier. You can also search by the provider's National Provider Identifier or MPI. On the left, you will see eight tabs. For a performing provider application, the services provided and the attachment sections are not required to submit the request. However, if you need to attach a document, you'll use this tab. For today's demo, We'll skip that tab since it's not a requirement. Before you can submit the request on PEMS, you must complete the NPI Taxonomy Information tab, Provider Information tab, Licenses Certifications or Accreditations tab, Disclosures tab, Practice Location Information tab, and the Agreements tab. Once a tab is completed, it will reflect a blue check circle. The first tab that we will look at is the NPI Taxonomy Information tab. This will collect information directly from the National Plan and Provider Enumeration System, or in short, NPES. If the information is not displayed here, click Refresh Information in the upper right corner. You'll now see your taxonomies that are tied to your NPI with an NPES, along with your name, NPI number, NPI type, and other information. After clicking Refresh Information, the blue check circle should be reflected. In this tab, we'll enter the provider information. Remember that we don't have to fill out the Services Provided tab, so we'll skip that. As part of the application for revalidation, we are confirming or updating the information that is already tied to your enrollment record. Here in the Provider Information tab, we see the information that is already associated with the provider. The Social Security number and the date of birth are grayed out by design. If you need to update those fields, you must become an administrator of the NPI. For now, Please confirm the issue date is reflected for your ID type and the expiration date for the ID type is current. This must be current because if it expired, the revalidation request cannot be submitted. After confirming that the information displayed is correct and any outdated fields are updated, scroll down and click Save. The Provider Information tab should now reflect a blue check circle, which means it is complete. Next, we'll complete the Licenses, Certifications, and Accreditations tab. Once we click on this tab, the provider's license, or licenses, should display. If the provider's license is expired, you'll need to update this information. To do this, click the three dots on the right of the license that should be updated. Verify the license information is displayed correctly and update the expiration date if needed. Complete these steps for any other licenses that have to be updated. If you want to add any other license or certificate to your enrollment record, click the Add Licenses, Certifications, and Accreditations button. For today's demo, we will add a Healthy Texas Women or HTW certificate to the enrollment record. Start by selecting the appropriate choice from the drop-down menu under the License Certification Accreditation type. To add an HTW certificate, we will select Add a Station, Healthy Texas Women. To add this certification, Read the statements in the certification and check the box. Yes, I affirm that the statements listed in the certification are true and correct. The effective date will be when the HTW certification is added to PEMS. After checking this box, 
Click Save at the bottom to add the HTW certification to the License tab. Looking at the License page, I want to point out that the HTW certification that we just added has an in-use status of not associated, which means that this certification is not tied to any of your programs in the practice location. To ensure that your license or certificate is active, you must associate it to the program within the practice location. We will go through the steps to complete this when we review the Practice Location Information tab. After updating or adding any licenses, certifications, or accreditations, the blue check circle should reflect on this tab. This means that it's complete. Now we can move on to the Disclosures tab. In the Disclosures tab, you'll see questions about the performing provider that is applying for revalidation. Some of these questions may have already auto-filled. Scroll down, read and confirm that the yes or no questions are all answered. If they are not correct, please answer these yes or no questions. Note that these questions are about the performing provider that is applying for revalidation and not about the group. After you have confirmed that all of the questions have been correctly answered, scroll to the bottom and click Save. A pop-up box will appear, asking you to upload documents. You do not need to upload any documents if the only question that was answered yes is, are you a citizen of the United States? Let's look at how to upload documents if any other questions are answered yes. In this example, we'll select yes to, are you currently subject to court-ordered child support payments? To get started, make a selection from the drop-down in order to associate each attachment to a question. Then, click the button at the bottom of the page that reads, click here to select files. This will generate a box with a drop-down menu for the type of document that you want to add. After making the appropriate selection, click Add Attachments, and then you can select the document that you want to upload from your computer. Select the document and click Open or Save. After you have added the document, you will see the document at the bottom under Uploaded Files. Be sure to click Save at the bottom so that the document is reflected in the Disclosures tab. If you receive the pop-up box again, Repeat these steps if necessary, or click OK to complete the Disclosures tab. Scrolling up, we will see a blue check circle next to the Disclosures tab, indicating that it is completed. Next, we will navigate to the Practice Location Information tab on the left. When a user starts a revalidation for a performing provider that participates in more than one group, all the group locations in which the provider is enrolled will be displayed. This includes locations that are not associated with the group-initiated MPI. The user who created the request can edit the information for all the locations in which the performing provider participates, including demographic information. Note that per the HHSC agreement, the enrolling performing provider must confirm that the information entered in their enrollment record is accurate. For today's demonstration, we will review how to complete one practice location. However, if more than one location is displayed, each location must be completed before the revalidation request can be submitted. To open the practice location, click the three dots on the right and select Open. There are three tabs on the left that you must complete. They are Basic Information, Program and Services Participation, and Demographics. We'll start with the Basic Information tab. Scroll down and enter the phone number for that practice location. The phone number that is entered here will be displayed on the Online Provider Lookup, or OPL. After entering the phone number, scroll down and click Save. Scrolling up, we'll see a blue check circle next to the Basic Information tab, indicating that the basic information is completed. Next, we'll look at the Programs and Services Participation tab on the left. In this example, we see that two programs are reflected. This means both programs need to be completed in order to revalidate. For today's demo, we will only review how to complete one program. You would need to repeat these steps for any additional programs. Start by clicking the three dots for the program you are revalidating and select Open. Within the program, scroll down and confirm that the information displayed is correct. Certain fields must be updated, while others just have to be verified. After we updated our license expiration date, we see that the license expiration date reflected here in the program was automatically updated as well. Remember that we added an HTW certificate, but we did not associate it to the program. To do this, click the Association, License Certifications, and Accreditation button. Note that the HTW certifications 
are displayed in the same order that they are listed in the License Certifications and Accreditations tab. For this example, we will select the sixth option because it was the sixth item listed in the License Certifications and Accreditations tab. After making this selection, click Save. Now, we see that the HTW certification for this year is reflected. Scroll down and confirm the demographics for your patients. Start by selecting any gender limitations and any patient age limitations. First, select the age at which you will start seeing patients. Next, select the age at which you will stop seeing patients. And last, select whether you are accepting new patients. For this demo, we will select all for the gender limitations. 0 as the patient start age, 18 as the patient end age, and that we are accepting new patients. Scroll down and confirm the Medicare information. Note that incomplete information in this field is one of the most common deficiencies for performing provider revalidation requests. First, verify that your Medicare number and effective date are accurate, and that this is tied to the Group PTAN, or the Provider Transaction Access Number. If the provider does not participate in Medicare and this question is reflected, select No, and check the top box, indicating that you will not provide services to Medicare-eligible clients. Then select one of the two selections underneath Medicare Waiver Requests. After making a selection, in the box below, explain and justify your reason for making a Medicare Waiver Request. For this example, we will use a Medicare number to associate to our program in the practice location that we are revalidating. Scroll down and confirm the yes or no questions are answered accurately. To complete the program, scroll down and answer whether you will be providing HTW services. Since we added an HTW certificate, we'll check yes for this question. Scroll down and click Save to complete that program in the practice location that you are revalidating. The last tab that we'll complete in the practice location is the Demographics tab. This covers the demographic information for the practice location that you are revalidating. If information is already displayed, confirm that it is accurate or see whether you need to make any updates. For instance, adding a county or updating your office hours. Check closed for any days on which you are not seeing clients and click Save. Scrolling up, we'll now see a blue check circle, indicating that the Demographics tab has been completed. Click the Back button in the blue header to return to the main page of the revalidation request. As discussed earlier, revalidation attachments are not required for performing providers. However, if you want to upload any attachments, click the Attachments tab and click here to select the files, like we reviewed on the Disclosures tab. Let's now navigate to the Agreements tab. The Agreements page is where you'll initiate the Health and Human Services Commission enrollment agreement. This has to be electronically signed or e-signed before you can submit your request. To begin this process, click the three dots on the right and click Select Authorized Signatory. Next, confirm that the name of the provider is listed accurately. Enter an email address for the provider to receive and e-sign the Health and Human Services Commission agreement. The agreement is a contract between the provider and the Health and Human Services Commission. Although the enrolling provider is not always the party that is completing the application, they need to sign the Health and Human Services Commission enrollment agreement to remain in compliance. After entering the email address, click Activate Agreement. Here we can see that the status of the agreement is sent. To electronically sign the agreement, open the email that was sent to the address that was provided earlier. Click on the link in your email. This will open an internet browser window, requesting a password to access the Health and Human Services Commission agreement. The password for a performing provider is the last four digits of their social security number. Enter this number and then click Continue. You may need to click Continue at the bottom of the agreement to get started. If this button is not reflected, use the yellow flags on the left to navigate to the portion of the agreement that needs to be electronically signed. Click, click here to sign and type the name exactly as shown in the agreement. I want to point out this is another common deficiency that can be easily avoided. Please do not use abbreviations of names, titles, or nicknames when signing the agreement. If the name that you are entering does not match the name of the enrolling provider, a deficiency will be issued. You must correct the signature and resubmit the application before the revalidation request will be approved. After entering the provider's name, click Apply. To complete electronically signing the agreement, click the blue Click to Sign button at the bottom. 
You will now receive a message confirming that you have finished e-signing the enrollment agreement. Navigate back to the PEAMS application by selecting that tab or window in your internet browser. We'll be looking at the Agreements page for the agreement's status to change from sent to signed. You'll have to refresh the page to update the status. You can do this by clicking Agreements on the left. Sometimes, this can take some time for the agreement to reflect as signed. Once this status is updated to signed, a Submit button will autofill at the bottom of the agreement. Note that if it takes a while for the agreement to reflect as signed, leave the request and then come back later. Here we see that the status is updated from sent to signed, and we now have the Submit button reflected at the bottom. Remember that after you have clicked Submit, you will not be able to make any updates or changes to your revalidation request. PEAMS will run a deficiency check before you can submit the request. If any deficiencies are reflected, you will see a red circle indicating which tab needs to be completed or corrected before proceeding to submit the request. If you see a deficiency, go to that tab, make the correction, and then navigate to the Agreements tab and click Submit again. A message that the request has been successfully submitted will now display. Click OK to return to the PEAMS dashboard. To verify the status of the request that you just submitted, click Requests in the upper left corner. You can search for the request by entering the request number in the upper right corner or by using the NPI of the provider that you just revalidated. Once you have submitted the request, it will display PE Review under the status. As the application progresses through its various processing stages, the status will update. The only time that you need to respond is when the status indicates pending provider response. This means that our provider enrollment department has identified a deficiency in your revalidation request. To correct this, open the request by clicking the three dots and navigating to the area where the deficiency was identified. This will be indicated with a red circle. Once you have made the correction, go back to the Agreements page and click Submit. This will return the application status to PE Review, and provider enrollment can verify that the correction has been made. After you've completed the revalidation request, you'll be given a new revalidation date. Your revalidation is usually valid for five years, but it could be less than that due to Texas regulations. This now completes the demonstration on how to successfully revalidate a performing provider. Thank you very much for your time today, and I trust that this video will be a valuable resource in this process.